Hello there folks, Martin Pavey here. Welcome back to the channel. A very warm welcome to you from a very, very warm Derbyshire. I've just been on a lovely, lovely walk. I usually walk on this side of the village, but on the other side of the river is completely open, sort of farmland, completely open fields and it's very, very sunny today, which is why I'm all spectacled up for you. But today's video actually is because I like to have variety in my life and while I love coming over here it's good to do things a little bit differently which is why we're going to be talking about people wanting one way of doing absolutely everything and you can't do it so please do like and subscribe and share to spread this very important message you'll find that People want a, a grand unifying theory of everything to explain the world and anything that deviates outside of that is, is verboten, basically. You know, people will turn to religion, they'll turn to politics, they'll turn to lifestyle or they'll be a gym bro or, you know, they'll be a keto person, <sighs> you know. And the thing is, we... We all know deep down that when we try to do that, we become very, very rigid. And I certainly, I will confess that I have become very, very intolerant of people and not really able to listen um, to other people's points of view. And funnily enough, um, I made a comment on, on somebody's tweet yesterday, uh, and it's a young lad. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll grant him a little bit of grace, um, but an understanding. Uh, but he was saying that everybody's just losers and it's like, well, um, so that's the message that you're putting out to the universe. He said, yes, because everybody is. Um, I said, well, is, is that so? Uh, <laughs> and what you'll find is not only, I've been talking about people wanting to have a unified theory of everything, how they want you to do, you know, to just dis, to agree, well, not disagree, to agree with everything they say. But I think we've also, we've got an enormous decision fatigue, uh, all these different ways that are propagandized and pushed at us about how we're supposed to live, about this is right and that's wrong. But if you think about your your day-to-day -day life, your weekly life, your monthly, your yearly, you know, your life as a, as a whole in general. What you'll find is that at various times, like I decided to go on a completely different route from my morning walk today, you'll find that certain times that you're in a different mood, sometimes you'll want to isolate yourself away from people, sometimes you'll want to be around people and interacting, sometimes you'll want to eat more, sometimes you'll want to eat less, sometimes you'll want to have deep conversations or sometimes you'll just watch, want to watch Netflix or like I am watching Clarkson's Farm. Um, but also this morning whilst I was having my first meal of the day. Um, I was watching a, a BBC series from the 1990s. So variety is the spice of life. And if you're going to interact with people, it's very, I mean, asking good questions is, is one really good way of actually developing connections with people, actually meaningful connections with people. But it's very, very important to not be to not be rigid and to throw out of hand things that might actually improve your life. And there's, it, it, it's possibly, I've mentioned this, uh, I've talked about a particular podcast that I watch quite a lot. Um, and I, I sort of feel like I'm coming to the end of my time of, of watching it. I mean, I enjoyed the episodes, but one of the things that the the host wants to do he he's kind of he was brought up christian and i'm not discounting any of the teachings and i am by no means saying that we have all of the answers you know because we we don't we don't have all of the answers that's what makes life interesting is the discovery the search the the hunt that's that's a big part of living an interesting life of being being open 
actually. Um, but basically, every single time that he talks to somebody, no matter what their background, <laughs> he will always say, oh, so, well, thing is, um, do you believe that this is a spiritual war um, and that this is Satan's work and kind of being really, really, oh, God, it's really cringeworthy, just really evangelical about the whole thing. And he's also taken on, as this has happened, and he's gone further down all these different rabbit holes. And who's to say how many of them are accurate or true? And, you know, most of them, you know, particularly politically, do turn out to be true. But he always kind of poses this question at various stages of his podcast for people. And you can see he's absolutely desperately waiting for for people to to just completely agree with him um, and say, oh yeah, yeah, it's like this is this is Satan's work and this is Lucifer and this is blah blah, blah and this is hell and this is heaven and etc etc etc. And you can see that when he's had a really good discussion with somebody and the person that obviously he has on his podcast are very they're intelligent people, very knowledgeable, very wise people and when they basically say, oh no, I don't necessarily believe that. The look. <laughs> <laughs> that look of disappointment on his face and I know that I sound like I'm mocking him but it's so easy the reason I'm making this point it's so easy to get locked and trapped and stuck in in a, a one-size-fits-all philosophy for the entire world it's so easy to to close yourself off to what might actually be really uplifting, enlightening and joy-making ways of living life. And uh, the more that you sort of look into it and you see that everybody has borrowed from everybody in some way or another, the foods that we eat, you know, what we would call the humble French croissant, um, actually isn't French at all. Um, it was inspired during the Crusades when we were fighting against the, the Ottomans. Um, and the reason that we have the crescent, you know, the croissant, that's what it is, croissant means crescent. The reason we have that shape was, you know, was in homage, basically, of the battles that were, that were fought. That's why we, have that and people say oh you know St George of England and loads of other countries yeah he was from Turkey well yeah he's he's from the landmass that is now Turkey but at the time that he was born was probably I imagine it was probably ancient Greece and all you know all these we're all we're all learning and taking from each other and when you hear things like cultural appropriation what that <laughs> You know that it's a terrible thing. It's like, well, no, it's it's not because it's how it's how things are, are formed. We learn from even from our enemies. We we you know so-called enemies. We learn from those people and we adopt things and we transpose them and we translate them and we modify and augment all of these things. And I think the more that we do that and less that we have this rigid worldview which is completely impenetrable i think the more that we can do that the more that we can actually understand i'm going to be very world peace here the more that we can understand how similar we are underneath all of the bullshit we can understand that there is a humanity to all of us and obviously there are there are cultures that do not mix they don't because Everybody is moving at, at different paces and people have different priorities and they want to maintain a sense of stability, which is why they hold on to, to different things. But I'm of the school that there is far more commonality and similarity between people than difference. And when you tie yourself so so fanatically to one world view that you feel disappointed that people don't disagree with you. I think it's a very, very thin way to live. It's not sophisticated. It's not rich and abundant. It's very, very closed. And I've 
you know, by no means am I saying that we don't draw boundaries, um, you know, to certain kinds of behaviour. But when I scroll through, when I scroll through Twitter, particularly, it's real, real sort of doom mongering. And I'm susceptible to it, and sometimes I will share things, but in the aftermath of sharing somebody's post about you know, a cultural issue, a political issue, I sort of feel a bit grubby. I, I, I feel like I've let myself down in a way, because what I actually want to do, again, world peace, <laughs> Mr. World Pageant, um, I want to spread beauty and joy and and get people to free themselves from the prison of of being boxed in uh, and and narrow-minded and if you actually if you ignore the the political stuff and cultural stuff that people are changing and and start paying attention to what's immediately in front of you well then you're in a position to be able to get on with people much better and to be able to actually affect enormous change in the world. We're very powerful beings, humans, very, very powerful. And we dampen that and, and diminish that by buying into doom and gloom and despair. So my message today is to be joyful, is to be understanding and patient, ask good questions of people. And if you can do that, that is the start of a really good connection. And, and make sure that you're asking yourself really important questions. What do, what do I need? What will serve me? What will make my life simpler, more abundant? What will make my life more enjoyable to lead? Good questions. And let the answers come up in their own time. There's no, there's no hurry. I'm always suspicious of people who tell you that you, you, there's a massive hurry to get things done. No, steady, slow and steady wins the race. So thank you very much for listening. Martin Pavey here. Please do like and subscribe and share to spread this very important message. And I look forward to seeing you for another uplifting and joyful video. Ciao for now.